we're going to start things off with a little bit of post-game show talk from the Mavericks' 112-98 to victory over the Orlando Magic. Now, this was in Dallas, so this was a... Uh, it was good to get this victory because home has been a very... The Mavericks have been inconsistent to start the year. This win finally moved them over 500 for the first time this season. But it's been a little bit of an inconsistent start for Dallas at home, particularly, I feel. And so for them to have really a handy victory here, handily win this game, it felt like a good response. The team was not at full strength. They had three players still in, I think they're still in Denver because of COVID protocols and everything. And it didn't matter because the team came out and fired on pretty much all cylinders. And, you know, I, I cautioned people early on when Tim Hardaway Jr. was really, really, really struggling. Uh, in my show I did with James before I left on vacation, I even mentioned, you know, the first month of last year, he was wretched. And then he turned a corner and suddenly was, for a good stretch there, far and away the number three guy next to KP and Luka. And if he can play up to that level, you've seen what Dallas can do. Well, here's the thing. You don't even have KP back just yet. And Hardaway Jr. goes off for 36 points, 8 of 13 from 3. The dude was an absolute flamethrower in this game and he wasn't even alone his former Michigan backcourt mate Trey Burke went off as well both of them hit at least seven threes Burke goes seven of eight 29 points this was the closest uh really the first time since the bubble we've seen Trey Burke just absolutely go off in a game coming off the bench Trey Burke is a perfect fit on this team and that's why we were so adamant about him coming back and the fact that he's like what a three million dollar player crazy value to get a guy like that on this team so the Michigan backcourt from like 2011 2012 absolutely went off in this game combining for 65 points and 15 threes in this game like 15 of 23 overall between the two of them from three very very efficient and you know Dallas uh, Dallas put it all together really well in this game. Now, you know, early on, they were hitting threes left and right. Orlando, not so much. Luka, Orlando was throwing a lot at Luka, trying to force the ball out of his hands. And even though they were doing that, it still opened some things up for Hardaway to get cooking. And, you know, Trey Burke, when he came in, was the spark plug as well. So a lot of things... Uh, worked for Dallas here. Not only does Luka get another triple-double, he, he makes a late push. He had like 13 points well into the third quarter, but he ends up with 20, 11, and 10. A very strong performance from Luka in a very more distributor role, I feel, than normal even. He knocks down on three of nine threes as well, does Luka. So he's still kind of trying to find that rhythm on it. I don't have in front of me his actual... Uh, percentages at this point as it relates to the three-point shot. But during this three-game Mavericks winning streak, he has been turning things around. The team as a whole have been turning it around as as far as three-point shooting is concerned. They have really climbed up the first 10 games or whatever it was, or not 10, what am I saying? They're five and four. They haven't even played 10 yet. The first uh, several games of the season until the last three games, they had been shooting like 30% as a team, which was the absolute basement of the NBA as far as teams are concerned. And the last three games now, they've really turned it around. They're shooting much better, over 40% as a team. Again, lights out last night, and it leads to a dominant performance. Now, the Magic with uh, Vucevic and everything, they... Great performance out of him, 30, 15, two, and two assists, and even two steals. He had a solid performance. Gordon, 16 and 5. You know, Orlando's dealing with a lot of injuries, right? They're not, they're not at full strength. They are they just lost um Markel Fultz to a torn ACL the the game before against Cleveland. And that's devastating for him because he was just really starting to break out and come into his own in Orlando. But you know, that's what they're dealing with. They have a lot of guys that are injured and it has thrown things off a bit. I still like what they've got on that roster if they're healthy, 
but they've got a lot of guys out right now for sure. Uh, let me see here. I see people in the chat talking about Maxi. I have not seen anything on Maxi yet, but uh, I will. Let's see. So here's Sham. Uh, Shams here. Forward Maxi Kleba entering isolation and missed the next 10 to 14 days due to COVID health and safety protocols. Well, that's going to raise some questions in since he played last night. But uh, yeah, did Maxi play last night? Why am I suddenly feeling like I'm insane here? Yeah, Maxi started last night, 24 minutes. So we could see further fallout from that if Maxi's having to enter COVID protocols here. So yeah, interesting how that's going to fall out. But we'll follow up on that as that develops further. So Dallas has made some changes here. The last couple of games, they've shaken up the starting lineup a little bit. Dwight Powell coming off the bench now. He's still getting 21 minutes in the game last night. But coming off the bench, I think, works better for Powell because you're seeing little flashes here and there of what he brought to the table before. I think he's better coming off the bench. And with Maxi injected into the starting lineup, even though he gives you 5-3-1 and one, uh, in the game, not a big game from Maxi at all, but I still like more what he brings to the table in the starting unit than I like what Powell does. Now, they've also injected Willie Cauley-Stein into the starting lineup a couple times recently. He goes for 6-6 six and in six and 23 minutes. I think that he's one of those guys who he's frustrating me a lot of times. It seems like there's several times a game where you see like a picture-perfect pass for an alley-oop and he's just missing the dunk. And it's like, dude, how do you miss that? But... At the same time, you know, I, I like more what he brings to the table in terms of his length, athleticism, and all of that. He's just got a little bit of that JaVale McGee to him in the sense that he's going to make some real knucklehead, knuckleheaded plays, but he is a very effective, athletic player that can make some really nice plays for you. So we'll see what happens with that. But I like the change up to the starting lineup here and you get the first start of his young career. Josh green plays 15 minutes does not do much. O of one from the field two rebounds. That was his night, but first start of his career. And you know what? That's uh that's not bad. It's, it's good to get him in there and to see a little bit of what he can do, obviously with how many guys they had out in protocols you're going to see some of these young guys get called up and get called on to do something. But all the same, Dallas really took care of business in this game. Uh, James Johnson as well want to call out 12-5 and five for him off the bench. He is, I, I like what he's bringing to the table. I'd actually like to see a little bit more of it, but I do like the element he's bringing to this team. And it's not just leadership and toughness. He's actually contributing out on the court as well. So Dallas for the game shot 49% from the field. Again, holding an opponent under 100 points. And of their five wins this year, three of them have been holding their opponent under 100. I don't know what the exact score was of a couple of their games that they won while I was out. But I do know that they've been cooking as of late, pretty much coinciding with my vacation, as it were. So yeah, they beat the Nuggets, obviously, in that classic, 124-117, and they beat the Rockets 113-100. to So yeah, three of their five wins, they have held their opponents under 100 points. And that's something that, I don't know if that happened three times all of last year. Something to consider there. But Dallas, from the, from the three-point line, was absolute nails. 20 of 40 from the field, that's 50%. Orlando was putrid in that category, 6 of 31, 19%. That's going to really open up a lot for Dallas as far as what they can build on and what they can uh, do. If they can if they can find some consistency with that three-point shot and you supposedly get KP back in the next, next couple games here, then you're really going to open things up for this offense as far as spreading the floor. Like we talked about through the first five or six games of the year, how this offense was had been number three in scoring the year before. And despite, I think, largely getting even better, they fell off. And it was because of the three-point shooting, how many threes we shoot per game as a team and how badly we were shooting them. If we're going to round into form now and have some guys kind of find their rhythm a little bit, then that's going to really make a positive impact. And then you bring in a guy like KP, who if he hits the ground even relatively running then yeah, this completely flips the equation on its head 
and you have an opportunity to watch this team surge into the top 10 in offense again. Uh, Dallas at the foul line didn't get there as much. Neither team really got to the line that much in the game, but less than 20 free throws is a little of a, a little bit of an aberration for this team. They're in the usually top five in terms of free throw attempts per game. So they go 14 of 18 at the line. I know two of those misses were hard away. I, those are just the two off my top of my head I know. Uh, turnovers was abnormally high as well for Dallas. Dallas had 17 turnovers. They're usually a lot better at taking care of the ball. Orlando had nine. So kind of like last year, I talked about how Dallas didn't force a lot of turnovers last year. This was a little bit of one of those returns. Part of that's not having Josh Richardson uh, being one of those guys out right now. And so a little bit revert on that end, not forcing the turnovers, but then Dallas goes uncharacteristic in the other direction themselves and turns it over a lot. But thankfully, it didn't matter too much as you still escape with a 14-point win. Dallas did assist very well in this game. Luka obviously with the triple-double, but they get 25 as a team. Uh, they rebounded. They won the rebounding edge by 1, 44-43. They did get beat on the offensive glass 10 to 6, although I think there was one possession there at the very end of the first half where the Magic got like three straight offensive rebounds um, before Dallas came away with it. And in rim protection, Dallas was stellar last night, eight blocks. Again, you don't have uh, you don't have KP there, your primary rim protector. So if you can get that kind of performance, that is really, really strong. Now, one thing I do want to call out as well, Luca has been so so improved the last few games even just going back and looking through it and in my prep for today's show his defense has gotten way way better he had five steals which was a career high the game before and uh, had a couple very nice plays here and one the guy goes right at him to the basket and he gets a clean rip steal blocks it on the way up you know the Dirk slap down move that was something Dirk was so great at um and he gets that, gets the ball, gets going the other direction. Just a phenomenal play there. Now, I think Dallas missed on the transition three they got, but it's still just a very, very nice play that you see there. Luca also, as I shared in the community tab, has really this season really incorporated the one-legged fadeaway into his game, into his repertoire, as it were. I know we were all talking about like, hey, what if KP implements a little bit of dirt to his game? Well, Luca appears to be doing that, and... He's been quite proficient with it using it this season. So I really, really like seeing the homage to the GOAT, the Dallas GOAT there in Dirk uh, in Luka's game. So I, I want to see more of this evolution from Luka. The, the defense stepping up in a big way, uh, getting steals, playing good, well-positioned defense. You saw glimpses of it in the bubble even last year too. And that's why I really think this is some kind of turning point evolution now as he is starting to about 10 games in the season really round into form and be more put together in that regard. Uh, you're seeing his overall game pick up, not just the triple doubles, but you're seeing the three-point percentage creep up at least back to his still frankly needs strong improvement numbers or figures there. But you're seeing that improve. You're seeing his legs under him a little bit better. And we talked about that as well, specifically talking about threes, how, you know, especially when you're shooting step backs, you don't have your full balance and weight under you. Your momentum is going away. And so it takes just a little bit more typically from your legs. And he hasn't had that, you know. And now that he's rounding into form better, playing his way into shape, you're seeing it come back and as he's suddenly taking back off into that all-star form that we know he is into that borderline MVP form that we know he is and that's just talking about the standards of last year that's not even talking about his continued growth but as that's come back so too has the offense come back and I don't think that's a coincidence I think you're seeing a big part of what makes him as special a player as he is so uh, yeah, there's not, a, there's not a whole lot more to dig into here on, on the game itself. Like I said, it's Dallas's third in a row. You get the Michigan boys going off in the game between Tim Hardaway Jr.'s 36 and Trey Burke's 29. You get 65 combined points, including 15 of 23 from the three-point line from those two. Uh, just, just stellar 
from those guys, throwing it back like it's 2011, 2012, and they're at Michigan. And this team can be very, very good. Hardaway, he might not be an everyday ideal third man, but when he's hitting, he's about as good a three-point shooter as you'll find. He's hot and cold. He's a little bit of a volume scorer. But when he's an absolute flamethrower on nights like last night, get him the ball, get out of his way. doesn't matter if he's five steps behind the three-point line. He'll pull up and knock it down. So, And then you saw that last year, too, in, in early in the year when they went to L.A. and beat the pants off of LeBron and the Lakers. That was really, a, I, I recall that being a very big Tim Hardaway Jr. game as well, where it's like, all right, well, they can kind of slow down Luka and KP. He's, you know, he's doing all right as well. He's getting his shots. He's not exploding. It was earlier in the year before KP really found that consistency and knocked all that rust off. But you saw that, and then Hardaway Jr. is going in there and just knocking down shot after shot, and they're just kind of like, okay, well, if we got to pay this much attention to him, a lot of attention to him still, KP, just being the, the respect that KP kind of commands at this point, even before he had fully rounded into form, as was the case then. That says a lot when you're having to deal with those two. And then you have a guy that was considered a, a jettison bad contract that Dallas just had to take on, yet he's shooting the lights out. We'll see what ends up happening with that. But I really like what Dallas has here with this combination uh, Burke off the bench, I think, is fantastic, especially for the value you got him at. He's never really landed and fit perfectly anywhere in his young NBA career. And as a result, you were able to get him for dirt cheap because he was here briefly the first time around, left. And then when he got to come back just in time for the bubble last year, I think he kind of realized, like, uh, I need to make sure I don't leave here because... I work better here than I've worked anywhere else. He does fantastic in Carlisle's system. He's exactly what Dallas wants. I'm su I'm surprised they let him go the first time, honestly, that they let him go to, I think he went to the 76ers when he left Dallas. I, I know that's where, where he got cut from before the bubble last year, but I think he was with the Sixers the whole year pretty much um, before Dallas picked him back up. 